Okay, so uh, we're back again. We let the primer dry overnight and uh, now we're ready to start applying the paint and I'll let Ray introduce the uh, process that we're going to be doing to keep it nice and clean. Okay, we have uh, previously discussed the colors that we wanted to use and we settled upon orange and blue, which are the survival corpse smooth colors. So we had worked out that we're going to paint all the vertical aspects of the frame blue and then the rest of the frame we're going to hit it with orange. So that involves us mas painting the blue parts first and then masking it off so when we paint the orange we don't have overspray all the blue parts and those having to go ahead and repeat and fix that part again. So, um, And working with these smaller pieces we're, we're going to, instead of having to mask this whole frame and then do this after painting this orange, because it might seem easier to paint this orange first. We're gonna we're gonna paint blue first and then mask this into smaller portions, right? Yes. Easier to mask. And yeah, then that's, we can... that's work involved. Okay. Overall. Very good. Here we go applying blue, and we want to apply it in a, like we did the primer, light coats. So as you can see, I sprayed all around the area, so that's why masking becomes essential when you're uh, doing small pieces like this because it's very hard to control the spray and have it land exactly where you need it. For final control, you can use a small airbrush or gun or a small sprayer. They usually have variable tips and nozzles that allow you to be very, very exact with the painting. But here, since we're under time constraints also, it helps to uh, just give you uh, a tech this head on and get that job done. There, and then when I get this one here. So. You notice I'm doing the uh, spot spray. It, uh, you run the risk of getting more runs and stuff like that, but it, it also eliminates the overspray from going side to side. So sometimes it's a compromise that you have to uh, Oh, wow. this color thing has come out better, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you cover all the angles. Make sure that the part you want painted is completely covered. Let's go back and repaint everything later on. It would be more masking and more work. So we're trying to avoid any additional work. And this is probably the quickest and easiest way to do it. Turn the frame. If not, I can always grab this. Now that the first application of color has been completed, uh, now we have to mask off that initial color so we can go ahead and paint the rest of the frame and not have to worry about repainting all the parts that we just painted. So um, on the larger parts, we're going to mask with paper and tape using the paper to cover most of the body of paint and then using the tape to finish masking off the peripheral areas. And as you can see, I'm taping on the outside of the welds, meaning that the weld is going to be part of the other color we selected. So we're taping on the inside of that line. So that way the only part that's covered is going to be going to be the, the blue. Because everything left exposed is going to be Careful precision. If you have to, you can scrunch the tape up so it follows the curve exactly. Depending on how exact you want to be, some people are very, very, very meticulous, and some people are just we don't give <laughs> that much concern over. So 
and if the bigger the curve is, or the more the more the more severe the curve is, the more you have to break the tape off into little pieces, so you can start following the contour of the curve with just little splotches of tape. It makes it easier to uh, follow a tight curve. Here. Here. So then we have dust masked off all this part here. That's one side. And do the same in the back. We're leaving the paper kind of bunched out in the back to prevent it sticking to the paper, to the paint, by weird chance it's not completely dry there. So. Okay. And like I said, this this segment right here is pretty pretty straight. And if we're careful with the painting, we should be able to paint this segment without any overspray hitting the part we just painted. So I believe there's a little part that's exposed right here at the apex of the curve and there you go that's how you mask parts of the frame off for painting and you can see do the same thing on the bottom following that curve well in this part it's pretty straight which is to our favor other parts you'll see that it requires smaller pieces of tape contoured to the curb. Alright, so we finished uh, masking off the smaller portions that we already painted blue and uh, we'll get some close-ups of that after I finish painting the uh, rest of the frame of the bike. But we have changed the color option. We're going to go with a, a yellower color because the bikes that we're building here are with the intention to sell. So uh, anyone that is watching videos and interested, you can contact us through the comments or even through our email addresses. But uh, so yeah, so we just decided that this, uh, this creamer color was going to be a better contrast with the uh, with the blue and uh, not so harsh and uh, you know just maybe a little more applicable to, to everyone's taste. So uh, we'll see how it comes out. Alright, here we go. Go away, baby, let's go. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have finished painting the bike frame, and um, if you look at the front head tube, we've already taken the mask off of that. You might be able to tell that we still need to go in and touch up some of the edges, clean them up with a little brush or something with a similar color, just to make it look as neat as possible, and we should be done. We also covered all the small elements that we also had painted a different color to make sure they could uh, withstand the spray paint. And these three parts we're going to take off after the paint is fully dry because we don't want to be peeling paint off with the tape. And this part I think we're safe enough to take it off right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start on peeling this. Just go lightly as you peel the tape back because you don't want to, if something's really, really stuck down, you don't want to peel off a whole glob of paint with it. So, oh, oh, that's good. Usually in, in other forms, when you do like a masking off, they do stencils sometimes of flames or something with the masking paper and they trace all the patterns with like a little perforating wheel and just tear the paper right as it fits the, uh, the image. We went a little less complex here and just did a quick tape up. I've seen jobs be a lot more intricate than this where you're like masking off spokes on tires and selective pieces of the hub and it's ridiculous how creative you can be with this but our mission here is to get a quality bike looking good and out the door okay. there might be a little bit of 
bleed through with this paint but that's all right because we do plan to come in and touch everything up with the paint and a brush to make it look as neat as possible okay as you can see we have pretty much finished assembling the bike completely both components together the back and the front and instead of going with the original shock which was a uh, rock shock deluxe we actually upgraded to a rock shocks vivid air and uh, the difference is the original shock was a simple mechanical spring with a piston um, to a now a fancy modern pneumatic shock being full of air and this pump you can adjust the actual weight cap capabilities by inflating the shock with a special pump through this valve right here and then it also gives you a, a considerable amount of uh, rebound control and uh, preload adjustment. And uh, that, with that upgrade, uh, we are looking forward to uh, completing the rest of this bike and make this project come together for us.